This video is sponsored by Skillshare. So hello everyone, welcome to the first video of 2023 and I hope you guys all had lovely holidays and are now back to your usual uh, activities I suppose. Um, it's been a bit of a rough start for me. Uh, I've had a bunch of like small ailments to deal with and I'm still a little bit sick even now. It's so annoying. I really hope I get better soon and can just get back to normal but I've still been working through this. It's not too bad. And in this video, I'm going to just share with you a sketchbook page that I filled a few days ago. And I guess I wanted to mention that the way that I approached it was I decided that I'd use a reference for the first sketch and then do the rest from imagination to just fill out the rest of the page. And it was nice. So it kind of was a really fun time. I think it's a good approach to take when you're not sure what to do and you just want to fill some pages in your sketchbook. So I'm just including the reference that I used up in the corner over here. I just found it on Pinterest. Uh, yeah, and the rest, I guess, speaks for itself. Oh, and quickly for the materials that I'm using for this sketchbook page. It's my usual and this sketchbook is from Muji which is a Japanese like household item store and I just bought a bunch of these like many years ago and I'm slowly going through them. This particular sketchbook I prefer for doing quick like warm-ups and sketches like this and whatnot uh, also for thumbnails because it's got really thin and smooth paper so the page count is probably higher than regular sketchbooks and it's relatively like it's not too thick i don't like it when sketchbooks are too thick because it, uh, it becomes a little bit difficult to use them when you're drawing close to the edges of the page and yeah it's very inexpensive and i also get my ballpoint pens from the same brand muji uh they're also very inexpensive and they're pretty smooth i like them a lot and i just also bought like a bunch of them back in the day and i've slowly been using them although i wanted to mention in this video that i noticed when they get old i think they start to dry out a bit so the ink flow is not nearly as smooth as it is when it's a fresh pen and that's something i noticed very recently because uh one of my pens was running out and so i went and bought a couple of new ones and when i was using it i noticed this huge difference in how smoothly the ink uh came out on top of the paper so that could be a factor but yeah i don't know also it's possible that it's just really really dry in my condo and maybe that's what makes the pen tips dry out i don't know whatever not gonna speculate any further on that but yeah and lastly the third uh, tool that i'm using here as you can see on the screen is the tombow dual brush markers they're acid free and not alcohol so they don't bleed through the page and that is the reason why i prefer to use these particular markers on this type of paper because the paper like i mentioned is very thin and it's smooth and yeah, these are really nice uh, markers to use. I actually really love them for the purpose of bullet journaling, uh, but they're also great for this type of sketching for me as well. Um, it's just adding a little bit of color can make the page a lot more pleasant to look at, even though these are just simple like warm-ups or studies. Uh, there's no particular goal in mind when I draw these, just to kind of relax and get my hand moving. Uh, so yeah, and... I've been using this orange one for the last couple of pages, but I think I'm going to switch to a different color soon. And I've been thinking of just going to an art store and getting uh, a lot more colors because I do love these markers and I only have a few and some of them are going dry like this one. The uh, edge, the, the tip of the brush side is getting very frayed, so it's a little bit hard to be precise, but at the same time it's kind of cool because it's drying out and so sometimes it can get strokes with a bit of texture which is something i also like but yeah so as you can see at this point in the video i have completed the first little study slash sketch from a photo and i decided to just proceed with the rest of the video doing um 
sketches from imagination and right now i'm just putting down a body shape without really having any particular outfit in mind and i just kind of go along with the flow and figure out what i want to draw slowly but surely <laughs> yeah i do that sometimes uh and i think it's it's pretty fun it's kind of like a free flow thing and i wanted to mention that when i was actually working on this page i was pretty unenthusiastic about it like i wasn't thrilled with how it was looking uh especially the first sketch i thought there was some sometimes i have a hard time relaxing when i do things like this and i know that they're being filmed because I know that like I have to be careful not to get my head to be too close to the paper uh, lest it be on camera and like cover the camera or whatever which is just my phone actually not an actual camera so yeah I don't know the whole thing can be a little bit stiff and so for the first sketch I was just having a bit of a hard time adjusting to just like keeping the sketchbook in one position that's another thing that i do a lot i tend to rotate the sketchbook quite a, quite a bit when i'm not filming and it is much easier for me and faster to do it that way but when i have to keep it in the same place it can get a little bit annoying but yeah anyways at this point i think it got a little bit easier to draw but overall I was not very enthused about this page actually up until the very end and I didn't even know if I was end up if I would end up using the footage because you know sometimes it's pretty common for artists to just be too judgmental of their work once in a while and um, I was thinking that maybe this page is gonna be so crappy that I don't even want to show it but in the end I looked at it the next day and it actually was pretty fun to watch the footage back um, even for myself which is something that never fails to surprise me because it is always annoying to film but it's always fun to watch it back for whatever reason so yeah i decided to use it anyways and i think in the end i am not like unhappy with how it turned out i think as a sketchbook page it's it's pretty fun to look at for me too so yeah the reason why i wanted to mention that is that it's all it always pays off to kind of just ignore how you might be feeling at the time about the artwork and just to carry on to completion and then you might be surprised that later it's not as bad as you thought so that's something that happened to me quite frequently actually not always especially not with illustrations that I actually plan out like and put more time into but when it comes to sketchbook pages they tend to look better later or like at least they're more fun to look at later before I continue, I'm just going to tell you about this video sponsor, Skillshare. It's an online community for artistic and creative people full of wonderful classes on a huge variety of topics such as music, art, journaling, writing, and so much more. It's the best place to go if you want to quickly pick up a new hobby or learn a new skill. Speaking of new skills, as you all know, I love fashion and for years, I've been dreaming of making my own clothes, but it's a scary step to take and I have not gotten around to it until now. I have finally taken the first step and started learning how to sew or sew. So <laughs> I found this class on Skillshare that is perfect for learning the basics. One Pillow, Seven Sewing Machine Skills for Beginners by Amy Plant. Amy explains everything patiently and the footage is super clear and very easy to follow. And I didn't do the exact project in this class because I only had one sheet of fabric to experiment with, but instead I tried to duplicate my existing pillowcase pattern and the result was not bad. Here it is. Not bad. Right, Lexi? I highly recommend Skillshare. Can't wait to start making my own clothes and I will show you guys, of course. But yeah, the first thousand of my subscribers to click the link in my description will get a one month free trial for Skillshare. Think of all the new things you can learn in a month. So try it out. And now back to the video. So yeah, there's a couple of things I wanted to talk about in this video. Not too much about the process of the actual drawing. It's pretty straightforward. I just, um, slowly but surely come up with random things on the spot and just go ahead and as you can see i put down a light sketch first and then go over it um thicker with thicker lines with the pen afterwards but yeah so let's see what we're, what was i going to talk about so the basically uh we're like what a couple weeks into almost two weeks into 2023 
and yeah i really really like this time of year typically because i like having a fresh start and i really like making plans for the year i sat down at some point at the beginning of last week and made a bunch of plans about what i'm going to try and accomplish this year um as most of you at this point probably know i like every year goes by and i tend to just push working on my comic further and further it's not that i don't actually work on it i do but probably not as often as i want to and actually yes for that reason i was going to mention that the next few like so my assessment of the situation of the fast past few months has been that um obviously keeping up with a youtube channel is very important to me i like communicating with you guys i like making videos and i want like i'm slowly working on transitioning into youtube being my main social media platform where i communicate with everyone and kind of keep up with on a regular basis i have managed to also install a regular posting schedule into my instagram routine which is something i don't know maybe i'll talk about that a bit later as well but overall i want youtube to be my main priority as far as social media goes but that comes with its own challenges because it does take a while to make videos and this is probably something i mentioned in one of my recent videos but yeah i found that the time that it takes for me to produce a video is always longer than i anticipate and what ends up happening is that throughout any given week a lot of time goes towards making a video a lot of the time the content for the video is not like directly related to my comic and so time just kind of passes me by and i end up with not enough time to make any significant progress with my comic so right now currently i'm employing a strategy where i kind of take a bit of a break when it comes to elaborate like more elaborate youtube content like maybe if you've noticed i've done a bunch of finished illustrations for the last few videos and sometimes like i don't mind doing a one-off if i really want to uh that was the case with the wednesday fan art i really liked to show i wanted to draw something and yeah i just went ahead and did that but then i was like oh i want to draw something for christmas too and you know that's the kind of stuff that tends to get into the getting away from me territory where i spent the whole month doing these illustrations because the illustrations took a couple of days by themselves and then a couple of days to edit the video to do the voiceover blah blah, blah. and then it ends up being like each of them took up the entire week so i wasn't really able to do anything else unfortunately so my plan going forward for the next few videos at least is to do these sketchbook pages and i don't know i think as far as content goes i personally like these types of videos because they're quite relaxing to watch for me also and i think they're good good company to just like open up and have in the background while you work on your sketchbook stuff or something like that and i don't want to like take a break from youtube or anything like that and these types of videos are significantly less involved so i don't have to spend like two or three days making an illustration uh this type of sketchbook session is something like an hour maybe an hour and a half and that seems way more manageable to me so i'm gonna try to stick to this format for at least a few weeks going forward and so if i can get uh, on a predictable schedule with youtube content like this that doesn't take me most of the week then i can try to shuffle things around and focus on my comic so speaking of my comic and the new year and some plans that i have um so far i am for sure going to attend at least one convention and that is tcaf which is the toronto comic arts festival and that's one i really like it's a little bit difficult to get into so i don't think i went there last year i actually can't i don't recall if i think it happened last year yes so it was obviously canceled for a couple of years because of covid but now i think it's back anyway so i did thankfully get in for 2023 and that's happening at the end of april and i was thinking about how 
doing at least a couple of physical conventions or shows will give me an opportunity to set some real deadlines when it comes to the comic because um, so far for now I am fully committed to it and I decided that for TCAF this year I want to do my best and try to have a printed version of at least a prologue and hopefully even like the first chapter just to have as a product um just like a floppy type of n not just one of those like super cheap floppies um, like co american comic floppies but something a little more substantial feeling but nonetheless not like a full hardcover volume or anything like that is what i'm aiming to produce i am not sure if i have quite enough time to do that but i think if i really put my mind to it it's possible the only thing that i'm really worried at this point is i have no idea what production times are like uh, for ordering books and print but having a printed version of the first chapter or half the first chapter or something is my goal to have for tcaf um i think it's possible like i said if i try and the reason why i'm really adamant on having this is i think like it's a solid enough goal that'll hopefully help me propel with the actual like pr or like go faster with the production of the actual comic and i want to finally have the opportunity to have something uh tangible to show people and tell them about the story so that they can like get a glimpse at it themselves and i also want to at that point have a patreon established so that i can work towards uh putting more and more time towards the comic so yes that is the tentative plan i know that i've mentioned some of these things probably before but at this point at least i have a solid timeline in mind and the reason why i think it's important for me to tell you guys about it is that hopefully it'll add to the accountability portion of things for me um it's always really really hard for me not to get sidetracked and derailed by a bunch of stuff like even right now i'm already torn between like putting most of my focus towards one project or picking up something else that seems super fun for the month of february like it's a constant battle and sometimes it's really really difficult to weigh out uh the pros and cons and like try to actually um prioritize what's more important like which is why like i mentioned i love the new year so much because it really gives me a chance to sit down and kind of overview what i'm expecting from this year and what i want to accomplish and one of the things i've learned over the past few years is that the fewer projects i commit to probably the better because i end up getting sidetracked with a lot of things whether i like it or not to some degree every single year and if i'm planning to do like three or four projects on my own that i'm committed to and I'm also getting sidetracked by some things that come along the way, then the chances of me getting things done that I want to or that I've planned to are nearly impossible. So, yeah, I don't know. Like, the thing that I mentioned that I'm sort of on the fence about at the moment is one artist um, on Instagram, Fifal. I don't know if you guys are familiar with her work, but it's super fun. And, uh, yeah, she does a lot of, like um i guess themed drawings and she's doing a challenge for february that's called funguary and you know it sounds so fun to me i'm a big fan of mushrooms and i was just thinking how something on the back burner of my mind has always been to make a fashion related zine or like a mini art book featuring my character sweet and zero and designing just a bunch of random outfits for them and kind of putting together a lookbook and this seemed like such a perfect opportunity to do that because basically FIFAL organized um, just like a mushroom for every single day of February and she grouped them into four weeks and that is the kind of organization that I've never gotten around to and it seems like a fun um, theme that is specific enough and because it's already sorted out like all i have to do is google a reference picture of the mushroom and use that as inspiration and you know i'm so torn about this because i really want to do that challenge i think 
it will be fun to do something every day or at least try to and especially since i did not participate in october last year and i was pretty sad about that the whole time i was like feeling massive fomo because i usually do october but the last couple of years i just kind of completely fell off of that wagon and so i was thinking that this would be so fun to start the year but then if i think about it more realistically i don't know if it's the best idea because something that is in the realm of taking my own advice like something that i've spoken about before in my previous videos or at least have mentioned in the past is that i can you know, I can logically sit down and think that if I just put a time limit on how long I will spend on each drawing, like let's say two hours, if I have a two hour window every day at some point, whether it be in the morning or in the evening after dinner to just spend on these illustrations, then that doesn't sound so bad. You know, it sounds doable. It sounds like I can get plenty of work done during the day before that two or after that two hour window. And you know, on paper, it looks perfectly reasonable to attempt doing this project. But on the other hand, uh, the thing that I've probably mentioned in my previous videos before is that the concept of creative energy and the fact that it's not always wise to look at your hour, uh, to look at your da days in terms of hours only, and to take into cons consideration the fact that there is a finite pool of creative energy that you get every day <clears throat> that uh, runs out typically a lot faster than you think and a lot of the time for me what carries me through to the end of an illustration is that um all those creative decisions like they get depleted towards the end but at least the momentum of finishing an illustration is enough to carry me through and get it done. However, um, I can easily see how the creative energy could get depleted far before or like as soon as I'm done with making one illustration or a page um, pertaining to this theme. And then maybe I will just find myself completely mentally exhausted to work on anything else for the rest of the day. So it's kind of a conundrum. Like, I don't know if I can handle it, but I really want to try this project. And this is a perfect example of what I mean by getting sidetracked by other things. Because it's very easy to get mentally completely exhausted by the things that you're committed to. And that's kind of where I find myself right now because we are at the beginning of the year and obviously the end of the year is usually pretty busy when it comes to things, uh, projects and such, a lot of things to wrap up. And yeah, I was super productive and I do kind of find myself in a position where I am relatively tired, but thinking about a new project gives me uh, mental energy and some sort of excitement is what I'm feeling. And sometimes that excitement is very important to propel yourself towards a new project. However, my backburn baby, backburner baby is uh, Gloaming Veil. And I just think it's so unfair that I keep putting it off and keep putting it off and treating it like a carrot on a stick. And yeah, I mean, I'm literally trying to make up my mind as I'm telling you guys about this idea of a project that I want to do. So I still don't know. I I don't know if it's possible because, OK, I will say that I did in October a few years ago. And I believe during that October, uh, that was actually the most consecutive days that I was able to do it. I think it was like 14 days or something, 13 or 14 days that ended up being that I finished illustrations for every single day. And I am pretty sure that I did other things at the same time and the reason why I was able to complete so many is actually because I set the specific time window to do these illustrations and that time window was between 10 and 12 p.m. each night and then I would finish an illustration and just go to sleep and that worked pretty well for me. I can't, unfortunately, I can't remember too well what I was doing during the day, but I'm pretty sure I wasn't just sitting around and I was doing other work. So 
that's why I'm kind of inclined to see if I can make it work because at the end of the day, I am the type of person who I like to do different things at the same time time and just being committed to one single thing uh single-mindedly is not something that i've ever been good at so maybe this would be good and i've also been thinking about um assessing how last year went is that even though i find myself stressed out by hectic circumstances when i have to do too much uh, and have to take care of a lot of things at the same time um on the same hand i end up getting way more things done and for the most part nothing nothing really gets lost in the sidelines and even though there's some exhaustion involved i do tend to be a lot more productive and it really keeps me going so and i i i don't have lulls around that time but also that is a dangerous path and can lead to burnout as well so you know, so many conundrums. I mean, at this point, I'm just thinking out loud. Actually, this whole video is me just pretty much thinking out loud. But again, I don't want to sweat it too much. Like I told you guys, making YouTube videos is super time consuming. And um, yeah, I just want to be reasonable with myself and still keep communicating with you guys. And also just share some of the things that are going on in my art, art life, I guess. And maybe at some point I'll even start sharing things that are going on in my other life or like the rest of my life as, as well. Speaking of which, I, I have mentioned many times before that I want to do vlogs and that's something I could never figure out how to do. Um, I have been taking a little bit of footage, footage here and there. So perhaps I will keep going on that front and maybe cobble together a vlog at some point soon. But yeah, where was I going with this? Yeah, so some of the things that I've been cobbling together are footage of me um, just doing various little things like packing some shop orders or like signing prints. That's actually a kind of an exciting news type of thing where the kickstarter for my new art book uh prism as some of you may be aware of actually if you guys don't know if some of you don't know about the fact that i have a new art book coming out uh i did there was a kickstarter with 3d total publishing last year that ran and this art book is going to come out very soon in a few months i think it's slated to come out in february late february or march so that's super soon and you can actually pre-order it on the 3d total website and i will leave a link to that in my description but anyways i have been working on some tasks from that kickstarter uh here and there so the first one was i got a bunch of these pages uh, to sign that will go directly into the art book that will have my signature on one of the front pages or like one of the first pages and then i also signed all the print prints that were ordered through the kickstarter and the quality of those prints is absolutely amazing and i cannot wait for whoever ordered those through the kickstarter campaign to get them um and i'm realizing just now that this is exactly the kind of thing that can be left to be spoken about in a vlog so <laughs> i'm gonna stop talking about that and maybe i'll tell you guys a little more details about those things when i do cobble together that vlog footage but yeah Aside from that, uh, the new year, um, obviously art is not my only focus. One of the things that I really have to do this year or gonna try to do this year is to get back to regular exercising because honestly, oh man, I noticed that my health has gotten so like wacky after I stopped exercising regularly a few months ago. And I've realized just how much that regulated so many things in my life. I mean, obviously it's flu season, so I got sick. I'm not blaming lack of exercise on that. But still, I've had like all these random little ailments. Like I had something on my eye. I think that I had to go to an ophthalmologist to get my eye checked out because it was really bothering me. I felt like there was something perpetually stuck in my eye and it turned out it was some sort of ulcer and that was like a whole thing. I'll probably tell you guys about that in detail in a vlog as well, but 
it's just like one thing after another and i'm so frustrated like the eye thing obviously probably has nothing to do with exercise as well but it's just been nothing but a slew of random small ailments for me in the past couple of months and i'm frankly sick of it and totally ready to move on but anyways yeah I completely start talking about something random but here is the finished page and like i said i am pretty happy with how it turned out in the end hope you guys enjoyed watching the little snippets of me drawing this as well and like i said i will have more pages like this for you in the coming weeks so hope everyone's doing super well in 2023 and i will see you guys in my next video bye